You are listening to the Boss Experience Podcast, a podcast with conversations about business growth, self-development, and maintaining a mindset to achieve business success. My name is Michelle Davis, and I am a business strategist and coach, and I am your host. Let's get started. Welcome to the Boss Experience Podcast. My name is Michelle Davis, and I'm your host. So I'm just sharing a little bit of bonus content in the form of an interview that I had with Christy Brownlow from the Everything and Nothing podcast. And in this conversation, we're talking about surviving change. Enjoy the episode. You know, I was just thinking how I came to know you was through my sister. Yes. And my sister has moved on. She has transitioned to a heavenly space, but I inherited the blessing of you. Oh, thank you. And you've been (laughs) such a blessing to know over the years. Yes. Thank you so much. So I think what happened, how we got here today, you saw a picture of a microphone. I was being silly and random as normal and posted a picture of a microphone that I bought. And you asked me if I was going to have a podcast. And I hadn't even given that any thought, to be honest. (laughs) But then you put that on my mind and I was like, you know what? No, I just want to have it because it's cute, the microphone. But if I ever do have a podcast, you'll be my first guest. And so here we are with the podcast and here you are as my first guest. And I am honored. So thank you for agreeing to chat with me today. Oh, thank you for inviting me. And and that's funny that you say, because that's the first thing I thought when I saw that mic. And I was like, that mic is so cute, right? Because <laughs> I had been looking at a similar mic for my my business coaching work. And I'm like, that that mic is so cute. I wonder what her topic, what her mm-hmm. topic is going to be, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was just serendipity. It was just supposed to happen, I guess. So tell me your business. You're a business consultant. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So in your business, what ways have you had to personally adapt after this whole COVID situation took hold? Well, initially my business was working with small business owners to help them build out their brands, their websites, and really put them out there online. Mm -hmm. And when COVID hit, business owners panicked Mm. and they didn't want to invest in marketing and they didn't want to, you know, they're like, I can't, you know, I can't afford, I don't even know if I'm going to be in business. Wow. And so one of the things that I decided to do in, in addition to helping business owners, you know, at low cost, and in some cases, you know, no cost through, you know, different services that I can offer. But also, I've been also like delivering more content online to help people. But the biggest pivot I made was looking at how many people were thinking, you know, how many people lost their jobs and how many people are finally kind of looking at that dream that they of owning their own business that, okay. that's kind of been shelved. Mm-hmm. Um, so they've kind of put it on the shelf because they've been, you know, in their mind, maybe they're too busy. Now they're thinking I'm too old or you know, because it's been on the shelf so long, my dream has dust on it. And so, right. Yeah. So what I've done is I launched, uh, essentially, uh, phenomenal boss Academy is what it's called. Okay. And this, and phenomenal boss Academy will help people that have felt undervalued uh, as employees or undervalued in life or feeling like they need, you know, to dust off that dream. And now evolved to being a passionate business owner. So I'm really big on, you know, through this academy with teaching people how to tap into what they're passionate about, Mm -hmm. tap into their own skills and expertise and how to build a business around it. Because so often, you know, even in the past, even before COVID, I would see a lot of business owners, they want to build a business around what's profitable and what's, what's trending. And my sole focus in Phenomenal Boss Academy is to help people pivot from, you know, losing their job and, and creating a second stream of income and finally starting their dream business. 
but it's going to be based on what you're passionate about. It's going to be based on your skills and your expertise. And also people forget that they have so many ideas and business ideas within them because we work so long as employees, we forget that we have, we are like our own entity Mm -hmm. and we identify ourselves on LinkedIn and all these platforms as our career. And so I always push entrepreneurs to identify themselves as themselves. You know, stop giving your your employer free free advertising. Come on now. You made me sit <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah, just just stop it. You know, who are you? And I had, you know, when we talk about, you know, surviving change, I, when I changed out of nonprofit, I, I'd worked in nonprofit for about 20 years and I didn't know who I was. And so Phenomenal Boss Academy is really about get, helping people understand who they are, what they've overcome. Because once you look at your, what you've overcome, it's amazing what comes out of that. And one of the exercises that I do with my coaching clients is write down an overcome list. And, and we can even add COVID on there too. Wow. Wow. <laughs> right? An overcome write list. Down. Yeah, write down an overcome list. Everything that you've ever overcome from the time that you have a memory, you know, whether it's something that happened when you were four, something that happened when you were 15, something that you happened when you were 30, 50, whatever age you were, what have you overcome in your lifetime? And when you look at that overcome list, you can't tell me that you can't help someone else make a transformation. Okay, all right. And so that is, so, you know, that is, the heart of what Phenomenal Boss Academy is, you know, helping people kind of tap into their own skills, their own expertise, because we, we don't have the confidence in ourselves right, to kind of venture out on our own. And so, you know, of course, starting a business is about taking risk. Risk. There it is. And, yeah. Taking yeah. risk because, and playing safe has gotten us nowhere. Absolutely <laughs> it may have nowhere us late, fast. Late laid off, we, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, everything. Yeah. So starting a business is easy. Making money from your business is the hard part. The only way to launch a profitable business is to have a plan, direction, and one source of information that gives you everything you need to get started. So what if I told you that a blueprint exists that can take you from finding a business idea you love to launching a profitable online business without an email list? a big social media following, or wasting your time scouring the internet trying to put the pieces together. Get the only source you need to launch your profitable business today. Just visit bossbusinessplanner.com to get yours today. Now back to the episode. Well, what I will say is, first of all, I love the name Phenomenal Boss Academy. That is like win, win, win. And I was just thinking that COVID is, has, I've thought of it oftentimes as a blessing in disguise, because going back to your point about people in the business that they've been in for such a long time, sometimes we get complacent, we get comfortable, we put our dreams on the shelf or on the back burner, we start focusing on all of the other things that surround us that are very important but we tend to stop looking at ourselves, our innovative selves, our creative selves, our passionate selves, our phenomenal selves. And when COVID hit and a lot of people either had to start working from home or they lost their job altogether, it kind of forced, forced you to take another look, take a new look and maybe go back to the things that you know you can do or that you dreamed of doing, but you put them aside because for whatever reason, you didn't have time, you didn't believe in yourself, you didn't have the confidence, whatever. And now it's like, we can only go up from here. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And so at this point, it's like, let's just, (laughs) we have reached the depths of, I don't know what this is. So at this point, let's just think out of the box. And it sounds like that's what you're doing with your clients. And that is just amazing to me. 
So I really appreciate you sharing that. And I didn't, I didn't say at the, at the top, but if anybody listened to episode zero, they learned that uh, everything and nothing will talk about different topics. We'll have different segments. And so this segment is about the journey. I call it the journey because we're discussing a compelling story of life or the different stories of life that impact us. And I think the story of COVID has impacted the world. And so this has been remarkable just to hear you talk about the ways that you can help people uh, pivot, as you said, pivot from being stagnant or from going backward to moving in a brand new direction. So let's talk about you. (laughs) Let's Uh just pivot. (laughs) Let's just pivot. I like that word. (laughs) We're going to pivot to you. So, yes. So you are a single mom. Yes. Okay. And what are the things that you and your, you have a daughter. I just know that. Yes. So what are the things that you and your daughter enjoy doing together? Um, You know, interestingly enough, uh, we have developed this like routine of, um, you know, we always have dinner together. Even before COVID, we would always have dinner together. But with us, even though things have died down with COVID, you know, Mm -hmm. we still don't, we go out when we need to. Okay. yeah, so we're we're not like trying to like go out and be everywhere and go to parties or any gatherings. So we spend a lot of time at home. So we, um, but we did venture out to some indoor dining. I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> and we went a couple like, of places. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. So we went to this place, a couple of places. Amy Roos was one, and so we lo- she loves food. She's a real foodie, and okay. she loves good food. So Amy Roos is a place in Harlem here in New York City. And um, they sell soul food, absolutely delicious soul food. And, you know, it's always great when there's a soul food place that actually has food that tastes like it's soul food. So that that is, you know, so we love that place. So we've been there. And so we've actually also been to another place called BBQs um, here in New York City, um, which, you know, they just serve kind of like barbecue, French fries. And I believe you told me before that you all enjoy going to the movies. Previously, we did. Um, So now we resulted to, you know, what's available streaming. And we're really right now, our biggest thing that we're into is Top Chef. I don't Mm. know if Top Chef is even still on the air anymore, but we started from episode one. Okay. Anytime I have a, I have, I like come across a new show. I have to start from the beginning. Of course, and yeah. I saw it when it was out, I guess, 10 years or 20 years ago. And she's just being exposed to it and she loves the show. So I, it's great because I've forgotten everything that actually happened and who won and all of that. So we get to, I get to relive everything with her because she's seen it for the first time. Isn't that something? So that was out, what, what did you say, 20, 20 years ago? Probably 20 years ago. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> and she's seen it. So now, and you said you forgot you forgot who I, the winner is. I forgot who the winners are over, you know, because I think the show ran for like a number of uh, seasons, maybe yeah. even 15 years. Yeah. And so it was a long running show. And I've forgotten, you know, they I, I see people oh, like, oh, that person looks familiar, but I have no idea if they actually <laughs> won the show. So it's actually, it's actually pretty exciting. That's uh, awesome. That's very cool. And then, OK, so tell me about a book that you have just t- tying a nice little bow around all of this. Tell me about a book that you have read that has been transformational to you, something that we can share with my listeners. There is a book uh, that I, ha- I haven't read it recently, but the book, um, it's called Let It Go, if I'm not mistaken. And this was a random book that I still have. And I refuse to get rid of it. I refuse, you refuse to, to let it go. I refuse to let it go. This book actually transformed my life because I was holding on to a lot of things, you know, a lot of like stuff in my childhood, a lot of trauma, a lot mm-hmm. of mistreatment, a lot of self-confidence issues. And this book was a combination of a book and like a workbook. So, oh, okay. Yeah. 
So I would read through, you know, I was reading through this book and then, you know, the chap, each chapter would start, start off with kind of like, you know, kind of like, this is what I want you to focus on. This is what I want you to let go of. And it was written from a spiritual perspective. Mm. And I don't remember the author's name. I still have the book here. Um, I'll, after the interview, I'll screenshot it uh, okay. and send it to you. But, okay. um, but the author is like a priestess of something, you know, and I remember getting this book kind of randomly. You've never been in the store and like this book is like, you know, mm-hmm. calling out to you. Mm-hmm. Not it literally. You. I ain't crazy. Yeah, it speaks but, to yeah, you. Yeah, but... You said I'm not crazy. No, but it <laughs> yeah. does. It speaks to you. Yeah. It's kind of like jumping off the shelf. Right. And that was what this book did. You know, it was like a random book. I don't even think it was like a best selling book. And it was like in a small little cramped up bookstore. But out of all the books in there, I saw this book, I picked it up and it transformed my life because this book took me from like, what, you know, what are the most painful points of your life? What, what's holding you back from, you know, loving yourself? What's holding you back from, you know, kind of living, you know, who you, you know, being living happily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Living happily. That was, you know, how can we get you to let go of all this baggage, you know, that you're walking around with? you know, whether it's, you know, how you've been hurt, you know, as a kid or how you've been hurt as an adult or in a relationship or how you've been dragged through the mud or, you know, what is it that you're holding on to? Because once you get that stuff out and you confess it and you Mm. get it on paper, Mm -hmm. let's let that stuff go. Let it go. You know, God had a greater plan for you than to walk around with all this baggage dragging you down. Mm. And and prevent and like blocking your happiness. And mm. so I actually picked up that book recently because I think it's important as we go through life and as we go through our own transformations that we don't forget that, you know, what we've been through. We don't forget like how we, you know, came to make our transformations and that we reflect on all of those things, you know, not to bring it up in our minds as something that needs to block us, but it's things that we've overcome. And it's just like that overcome I list. I was that just I about, about to say that. It goes back to the overcome list. Right. It's things that we've overcome. And, you know, we need to get in tune with that. We're scared to talk about what we've overcome. True. And yeah, we're scared. We're ashamed. And we are, you know, we hold back. We want to pretend like that part of our lives didn't happen. But yet that the very thing we're pretending didn't happen is actually taking over how we think, how we, you know, handle, you know, act in relationships, all of our, you know, if we, you know, are we insecure? Are we confident? You know, everything that we've overcome actually dictates how we walk through life. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. just whether we choose to acknowledge it and put exactly. it on paper and see it and embrace it instead of saying, you know, being ashamed of it. Well, that it, that book sounds amazing. I'm definitely going to look for it and then share it. Yes. So yes. that other people can benefit from it. So as we start to close, I want to give you the last word. And one of the things I was thinking about in visiting with you, of course, I th- think about my sister and one of the her sayings. I don't know if you ever mm-hmm. heard her say it, but she used to say it to me all the time. And it was probably because I was being dramatic about something. Mm-hmm. And she would always just say, dig deep. <laughs> <laughs> dig deep. <laughs> you can do this because I would call her. Which is, oh, my God, this happened. And oh, my God, I can't believe it. Dig deep. Christy. (laughs) And so (laughs) as the last word, I want you to just share some advice for ways that people can dig deeper and overcome whatever challenge they're going through at this time. Absolutely. And yes, I, yes, Deborah was known for, you know, (laughs) she had a couple of phrases, dig deep and piss poor. Piss poor. (laughs) (laughs) yes so I remember you know she told me to dig deep because I would you know call and talk to her about my you know everything that was happening in my marriage and blah 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 and you know and she didn't judge me and she you know totally gave me sound advice and so you know with that being said 
and we have to take and remember and embrace people that have been in our lives, even if it was for a moment in a season and kind of remember, you know, what they taught us. But one of the things that I would say in terms of having the last word is for people to dig deep in, into themselves and really take the time to discover who they are and what they really want. And I'm not talking about in generalities, you know, be specific about who you are, what you want out of life and actually claim it. One of the big things that I've been doing recently is, you know, affirmations, writing my own Mm -hmm. affirmations, because it's helped me actually stay sane. (laughs) Yes. Um, Yes, I understand. I do them too. Yep. They're very important. Yes. And so I do a reflection. And so dig deep, find an affirmation and kind of reflect out on what that affirmation means to you you know, get in tune with who you are because you are not the title that your employer has given you. You are not this unseen person that has no value or voice. You know, you are a beautiful human being and you just need to discover it, own it, and claim it. And claim it. And Mm -hmm. dig deep. Dig Dig deep. Dig deep. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, indeed. (laughs) That is the last word. Dig deep. I found her a mug that said dig deep and you would have thought I had hung the moon. She was like, nobody touch my mug. (laughs) It's my saying. So I hope you enjoyed that piece of bonus content. And if you've ever survived change, you know, it can be really, really rough. But always remember, you have what it takes to overcome whatever it is already inside of you. So tune in for the next episode of the Boss Experience Podcast. See you soon. And thanks for tuning in. Business success requires planning, strategy, and a whole lot of confidence. You have to believe success is possible for you. That's why I'm gifting you... 30 free affirmations to hang around your house, to display in the office, or even use as journal prompts. You see, infusing your mind with positivity allows you to erase self-doubt, increase your confidence, and ditch the fears that come along with starting a business. So it's time to allow your mind to reflect the business and the future you desire. All you have to do is visit BossLadyAffirmations.com to grab your free affirmations today. Now back to the episode. Thank you for tuning in to the Boss Experience Podcast. Don't forget to leave a review for this episode and tune in next time.